Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Isaiah 59. But your iniquities have separated you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, that he will not hear. Hallelujah. Now very briefly, I'll just encourage our hearts, and then... Have you wondered why many people keep running unto God? Lord, help me sicknesses diseases all kinds of infirmities and it looks like in many cases god seems to be helpless hallelujah people come with their sicknesses and go back yet we read in this bible that verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do he shall also do and greater works hallelujah the bible says in acts chapter 10 verse 38 he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good and healing not some all day that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him in other words, oppression comes from Satan. Correct? He said he healed all that were oppressed. Of who? The devil. Bible says in John 10 verse 10, he said the thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill. In other words, you can look at a life and know whether Satan has passed through that life. There is a footprint. There are many families you can trace the works of Satan. He comes when he comes and meets you he doesn't leave you the same he comes to steal to kill and to destroy Jesus said I am come I am come that ye may have life and have that life in abundance do you believe this hallelujah and here Isaiah is speaking by the Spirit he said, the Lord's hand is not short. Why does it look like God is unable to heal and to deliver? Why does it look like Satan is prevailing over families? All kinds of manifestations of darkness. And believers cry and we look so helpless. Oh God, come and save us. And we talk about all kinds of satanic manipulations. In different families people pray they have vigils they bring pastors and prophets and it looks like Satan is not scratched one bit has that happened to any family here people take communion they take anointing oil they take all kinds of things they pray 21 days fasting 40 days fasting the sickness remains yet the Bible says the hand of the Lord is not too short that he cannot save. He said his ears are 
are not so dumb that you cannot hear the prayers of the saints many of you coming here have cried you've gone from pillar to post looking for solution can i tell you something friends especially those of you who are in the ministry christianity is useless until it can present the love of jesus to people in a practical and a personal way are you listening to me a lot of people who say miracles is it really necessary just teach people the word now the day you get into trouble you will know the need for the power of god because some of you are just laughing but there are families that came right now is a matter of life and death hallelujah there are many people here with all kinds of sicknesses doctors have probably given you reports that you have a few days or few weeks to live maybe hiv maybe cancer tumors growths all kinds of things barrenness and all kinds of people coming with every manifestation of curses and whatever delays you cannot account for hallelujah so when we're talking about miracles we're not just talking about healing in your body alone are you listening to me we're talking about miracles signs wonders breakthrough you know what breakthrough is breakthrough occurs when whatever is limiting you is taken away so that you are no more limited financial breakthroughs breakthrough in your life in your mind that you advance there are many of us you remain in circles no accomplishment no achievement there's nothing to show for it there are many families that are represented that way so i like your heart to be set tonight don't just come to spectate and watch others while i prayed for this meeting i said lord start with me tonight that's what i told god i said lord as i dispense your power and as we show how powerless satan is tonight listen let me tell you something god will demonstrate one more time that every sickness is a spirit it has an ear it has a name and it can bow he says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you they won't just bow for there is a name there is a name we come in that name and david stood before goliath he said you come to me with your spears but i come to you in the name of the lord god the captain of the host of israel the one who you have defied tonight whatever has defied prayers fasting whatever you will watch it bow right before your eyes in the name of the lord jesus make sure that as you're standing tonight you're also connecting with your family he said as for me and my house that while you are here the bible says when the centurion said no i am not worthy that you should come to my house but speak the word only the bible says as he declared man that result was happening in the house and people ran back with testimonies that that very same hour so the power of god knows no distance and no barrier he stood from the tomb of lazarus and shouted and that sound reverberated in hell no distance it picked one person and brought him back into this earth realm i want you to know that you are not coming to the kind of god that many people in their religion have presented as if god is just a little greater than satan no i come to present to you an all-powerful god tonight one who is limited by nothing hallelujah limited by nothing he searched the heavens and the entire span of galaxy to find who was greater than him so that he would submit to and swear by and he found no man and the bible says he chose to swear by himself that by these two immutable things it is impossible for god to lie we have seen testimonies upon testimonies in this place the hand of god changing blood groups from ss to aa all kinds of bone conditions cancers tumors hiv for if it has a name then it has a knee and it can bow in the realm of the spirit only the lesser bows to the greater 
It's an aberration for the greater one to bow to the letter. And tonight we come with a name. Call cancer a name. Call HIV a name. Call breakthrough. What, whatever it is. All kinds of mental bondages that subject people into pain in life. Cause delays that you cannot experience. Tonight you will experience the liberty of the spirit. I like your heart to be open. Don't be a spectator. See, the Bible says they had the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith. When you hear the word like this, you say, Lord, this is me they are talking about. When it's time for your power to move, as you are healing people, I will clap for my neighbor. But let me rejoice. Because your hand is not too short. You are able to save. Let me tell you something, friends. If God cannot help you, you are finished. Because no man can help you. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? Say, my help comes from the Lord, the maker. Some of you are standing outside because there are no chairs. Let me tell you something. Make sure you don't waste your experience. You are standing. No one knows you in this crowd. But I like you to press. The woman with the issue of blood took initiative. She said, tonight I will break some rules. If I may but touch the helm of his garment. You may call me unclean, but I will press. Whatever you want to say about me, we will discuss. When they saw Jesus in the room, the people found that they could not press. They said, look, let's tear this zinc. We will negotiate with the man after he gets healed. There is a way you can be desperate for a miracle. There is a way you can be tired of the state of your life and your family. That dissatisfaction is the raw material you need for the miraculous. For the Bible says, woe unto every man who is at ease in Zion. It takes a level of anger that you say like Jacob, Lord, people have been celebrating the same sickness that brought me here. And let it change tonight. Tonight we are not coming to discuss with Satan. We are not coming to just comfort you psychologically. We don't have time for that nonsense. Hallelujah. That every window of opportunity that is destined for you. I trust that tonight God will restore men. Let me tell you what restoration is. Listen, listen. Restoration is not advancement. Restoration is God taking you through time. He said, I will restore the years. Canker worm can eat the years of a man's life. So a man is moving forward, but in the spirit you are you are far behind. You are just advancing in age, celebrating birthdays, no accomplishment. So canker worms can eat years. Let me tell you something. But God said, I am able to restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. So that in one day, like Samson, he killed more people in one day than he did in his lifetime hallelujah i pray in the name of the lord jesus that dreams and visions tonight will arise there are many of you that the, the kind of gift and grace that god has bestowed upon your life for whatever reason you have allowed satan to lie to you but i pray and there are many of you just like saul saul left the son of kish went to look for his father's ass little did he know it was destiny calling him some of you are 100 level students you do not even know that god brought you here you thought you just came for a meeting you watch as destiny begins to unveil in the power of his presence for when he left he met samuel and samuel anointed him suddenly saul who left as an ordinary man stepped into a band of prophets and began to prophesy and men said is Saul also one of the prophets there is a way God can alter the life of a man that your life becomes the epistle the message you don't need to talk your life begins to demonstrate it hallelujah so don't say you don't need a miracle tonight don't say you don't need a breakthrough Tonight we are going to be shouting in the realm of the spirit. And we are going to be telling some doors and ancient gates to open up. 
the bible says the children shall not suffer the iniquities of their fathers hallelujah and for those of you who came from far let me tell you something that that journey alone is a sign that god must change your story tonight go and read your bible everyone who came to jesus from afar was healed not one went back disappointed you don't know it's an act of faith to risk yourself on the road hallelujah it's an act of faith because you see god is everywhere but his manifested presence to heal and to deliver is not everywhere that's why oftentimes he will call men to a certain place where he will meet with them not everywhere hallelujah the bible says but your iniquity you know i began to pray and i was crying unto god i said lord why is it that in a great meeting like this only maybe few people receive testimonies of miracles and breakthrough and then the large congregation just get excited maybe they fall down they stand up they're happy they cry and that's it do you know that god's prophetic instrument for publicity is the manifestation of the kingdom in the lives of people when god truly touches you you will be too grateful to keep quiet that's how the gospel was supposed to advance hallelujah and the lord showed me one thing he said son we spend time trying to pray against demons trying to pray against many things which has its place but did you know the lord shocked me not that i didn't know it but it came with a new light that the greatest hindrance to the flow of the power of god in a man's life is sin I know many of you have had it but right now when we come for meetings we concentrate on demons correct we concentrate on um unbelief and and different things which is wonderful but i need you to know that sin listen sin in a man's life is the greatest and surest doorway to short circuit the power of god now we trivialize these things that's why we don't see the authentic power of the spirit that's why just a few people are touched do you know my prayer every time i step in and i see people there are people outside to as far as your eyes can see i don't just brag and get excited and say see the crowd i'm saying lord how many of these people will genuinely go back with a testimony because it's not fair for people to leave their homes leave different places there are probably hundreds and thousands of people streaming and following us online and it will be so unfair for people to leave their homes and come only to rejoice for a few hours and go back i said lord it's not my life that will do that kind of ministry hallelujah the sin barrier there are lots of believers that don't deal with issues in their lives that empower Satan and empower demons to find expression over the life of people. Every time God healed people, he would tell them, go and sin no more. Lest a greater sickness or a greater challenge come to you. We don't address the issue of sin because we feel, oh, we are the righteousness of God in Christ wonderful and that's true but let me tell you something you empower satan a true life of holiness and righteousness and godliness is the greatest way of resisting the devil and commanding authentic supernatural power are you listening to me we must be able to close the door the Bible says through sin, death came. The word death near does not just mean cessation from living. It means anything that does not typify life. Through sin. Sin opened the door for sickness. Opened the door for oppression. Opened the door for every kind of satanic manipulation. Tonight friends, I love you too much to lie to you. I won't deceive you. 
we will take a few minutes and truly address and i said lord all this sin sin you know the whole thing god told me that uh -uh, it's not just my mess is there but there are some sins the bible says the sin that easily besets us hebrews 12 verse 1 it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses he said let us lay aside every weight and the sin that means it's specific you know it the sin that easily besets us and then we will run with perseverance the race that is set before us are you listening to me there are many people who want to receive from God and I want you to get the best of God but let me tell you something if sin is at work in your life it will keep empowering demons because of the influence of God's power in this territory they may seem to leave you for a while but they will gather their kind and return back because if that sin issue is not addressed the Bible calls it the sin that easily besets us hallelujah and the Lord began to show me again. Hallelujah. That scripture, 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. Popular scripture. But many people do not see the life in it. He said, if my people. So the first statement is, they are my people, correct? If my people, who are what? Called by my name. But it does not mean they will be free automatically. They are my people. They are called by my name. He said, they shall do what? Humble themselves. That's the first thing you need to do tonight whoever you are pride is one thing that kills people they feel they don't need a miracle they do not want to subject themselves to god laws of receiving miracles if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then do what Turn. this is what the church does not want we want to receive miracles and return back to our life. So don't talk to me about my life. Just heal me and let me go. Just pray for me. Let financial doors be open. Let me just be a millionaire. Let me just be blessed. Let me build a house. Let my parents buy the car. Wonderful. Let me get the job. Let me be promoted. He said, but shall turn from what? Their wicked ways. There must be a turning. God says, I will be watching until you turn. The strength of forgiveness is if there is repentance. If there is no repentance, forgiveness does not have value. And turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven. He said, and I will forgive their sins and do what? And heal their land. There are four major sins that the Bible puts and that God revealed to me while praying for this meeting that easily beset men and we're going to consider them very quickly because I want us to just enjoy what God is going to do today number one number one is what the Bible calls immorality hallelujah immorality is not just sex are you listening to me so don't you sit that there and say, thank God, I'm not part. Just keep quiet and let me land. Immorality is not just sex. Hallelujah. Immorality. A state of lust for anything that is not any, the, the cravings of the flesh. Immorality. A sin that doth easily beset a lot of people. That's why they see that they cannot walk in perpetual miracles. You can pray. You can fast. You can jump. But I'm telling you, if you do not address the issue of immorality in your life, forget about walking in authentic power. You may not like the message tonight. But God brought you to listen. Hallelujah. Because what we men of God do is that as soon as members come, we just come and we tell people, oh, receive, take the power of God, do this. No, 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 no. You must address the life of the people so that the miraculous will be a blessing to them. Say amen. amen. Immorality. 
we must be able to open up ourselves and flog out that issue and close doors listen did you know that the greatest expression of intimacy between a man and a woman is sex correct that's the same way when the spirit of immorality comes upon you it seeks partnership with your human spirit and will never allow you to walk in true righteousness and holiness I want you not only to be blessed tonight but to receive the authentic power of the Holy Spirit if you came here to hear the truth and to be blessed I'm telling you the truth the sin that doth easily beset us number two idolatry one great sin that easily besets people you know what idolatry is idolatry is not just building an image idolatry is putting your hope your trust and your confidence in any other thing above god any other thing my uncle my auntie my this my that the bible says woe unto any man he that puts his strength in a man this is the reason why many people cannot receive from God. Every time God says, I want to bless you, your mind is going to one uncle. And the truth is, you think you are trusting God. You only remember that your uncle said he will bless you. So when the prophetic word is coming, you are seeing, you are already calculating. Who told you God needs your uncle to bless you? Are you listening to me? Idolatry. you take away every support and say lord you have made a way for men in the wilderness you have called strangers to bless people i take my eyes i've said it in life and in death i put my strength in no man aside from god whatever god cannot do for me let it not be done wherever god cannot take me i will not go are you listening to me you must challenge yourself idolatry many people put their whole strength in a man of God now I know the Bible says believe in the Lord and you shall be established you shall be established believe his prophet and you shall prosper you must also believe the vessel that God is going to use but not to come and begin to worship a man because you are looking for miracles are you listening to me there are lots of believers who are caught up in that kind of satanism. Yes, God uses vessels. God is using me right now to bless you. And shortly you will be experiencing higher levels of his grace and anointing in this place. But I want you to know that your strength and your confidence. This is why it is always our desire to exalt Jesus Christ. We have no business trying to exalt a man. Joshua Selman. The king of kings and the lord of lords. The one who is coming to perform miracles. Let me tell you something. I have confidence and I believe God will use me to bless you. It's not pride. It's the truth. He has anointed us. Jesus said the spirit of the lord is upon me. He didn't say the spirit of the lord is in heaven. He said it's upon me. So there is a place of confidence. But not to bring you to a point where you must worship me. Because I am the absolute custodian of the power of the spirit. That's witchcraft. It's idolatry. Hallelujah. So for those of you who came here to see the great man. Joshua Selman. You've had me on tape. This is the man. Nothing much about me. Except for the fact that I'm available for him to use me. Are you listening to me? There is only one name that should be exalted. Jesus. Not God. Jesus. God can mean anything to people. A bottle of minerals. One stone somewhere in your village. But when you say Jesus. The Bible says he's the express image of the father. Hallelujah. So every miracle that you will see in this place. Is the Lord. Walking through. Willing vessels. To bring miracles for people. 
Hallelujah. That's why we rejoice and we are confident. We won't do that false humility to lie that we are not anointed. I'm anointed. It's an election by grace. It's not pride. It's the truth. The ministers are anointed. However, we will not forget the anointed is only an usher. Christ is the one we are leading men to. So if tonight's miracle does not direct people to Jesus Christ, we ended up creating a platform of witchcraft where we become the king of kings over the lives of people. Hallelujah. Number three, very quickly. Unbelief. Unbelief. The Bible says in Hebrews, there's no time. It said they did not enter their rest because of unbelief. There, there, there are certain Christians who are so cynical. Listen to me. And many of you need to be delivered from that spirit. Hallelujah. You never believe anything that is God. Someone says, ah, I had a fractured leg. It's just fixed now. And you are just saying, hey, oh, they should allow me to come and stand and check. All these stories we are doing. How are we sure that the person, you see, that cynical spirit is what the Bible calls unbelief. Hallelujah. So, when people are opening themselves and receiving, you're just standing there and wondering and saying, wow, interesting. How are we sure this way? How are we sure? How are we sure? That's just the language. Satanic and demonic. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a believer. Tonight, don't just watch others and say this thing. Let me look first. If two people get healed, that's when I'll be sure. Or my friend that I came with. Let's see now. If you don't get blessed, you can't come and beat us. Did we collect money from you? We will enjoy the blessings of God and move. Whether or not you don't believe that God is at work, look at the people inside and outside. Their joy unto God will trample your unbelief. But I know there is a God who heals, who delivers, who can change the stories of men. The fourth sin that easily besets men is what the Bible calls a lying tongue. A lying tongue. Book of Proverbs, the Bible says six things the Lord does hate. Seven, an abomination to him. The second in that list is a lying tongue. Let me tell you what a lying tongue is. A lying tongue is not just saying, ah, Reuben is wearing kaftan. Where is wearing suit? Are you listening to me? A lying tongue is that tongue that is not consistent with the truth of God's word. That's what the Bible calls a lying tongue. It's not just negating or saying things that did not happen. So if God says you are blessed and you refuse, you are a liar because God cannot lie. You get my point now? A lying tongue. Many of us allow our tongues to profess and to speak things that are not consistent with the word of God. God says you are healed. You are there celebrating sickness. God says you are blessed. Hallelujah. And now we think it doesn't matter. But the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It said, life and death are where? In the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That means you will eventually eat the fruit of whatever you are sowing. I refuse to have a lying tongue. That's why I believe he will bless people tonight. I dare not say he will not bless. We are going to pray in the next five minutes and say, Lord, 
whatever will not let me go back with a great miracle tonight take it away from my life no 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 we don't bow our heads in this place stand up on your feet we are going to pray now is not the time to sleep please rise up and pray inside and outside in one minute i like you to pray say lord i know that your hands are not too short I cried my life unto God. I said, Lord, tonight, as you bless men, do not forget me. As you change the stories of men, as you have always done, do not forget me. Go ahead and pray and say, Lord, my life is free from immorality. My life is free from a lying tongue. My life is free from idolatry. Tonight, my eyes are lifted up to you. Come on, pray. He's here tonight to bless us. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh Lord. Forgive me. And I have believed That you are unable to help. Who told you God cannot help you? But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my heart, and in my heart, and with my soul. Sure you're singing it from your heart inside and outside be magnified be magnified oh Lord magnified oh Lord you are highly exalted Now tell the Lord what you want him to do in your life tonight. Say it so that when it happens, you will know he did it. Don't keep quiet. Say, Lord, change my story. Deliver my family tonight. Hallelujah. 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 The devil is a liar. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Spirit of the Spirit of Lord. Come and make your presence Lord reveal the glory of the Hallelujah Let the heavens be open. I command the miracle angels, the angels of deliverance, across the land and breadth of this building. Everyone who is standing in this place, let him be under the influence 
of the power. Yeah. I'm going to rebuke Satan and the works of darkness over people and families. Listen, it's time for any devil that is standing your way and that of your family to go. For the enemy has done this. And God has so highly exalted him. Lift your hands. As I rebuke the works of darkness. As the power of God comes upon you. Let me help them in front. Thou devil of darkness. It's time to go. Let God's people go. 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 Let the power of God fall. Fall. I command demons. Powers of darkness, for you cannot stand in the name that is above every other name. Go, or shall bring them outside. That devil, let God's people go. Those outside, lift your hands. The power of God sets men free. Sets men free. Set men free. Katala kapato toto bakata. Randa tabosa. You're going to shout Jesus once, and the power of God. Devils will leave. They must go tonight. They must go. Are you ready? Especially outside, the power of God will fall like rain. Shout Jesus. Let the angels, the angels of God are moving with a sword in this place. The angels of God are moving with a sword. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains be broken by the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, no devil can stand, no devil can stand, no devil can stand. I tell you, no devil can stand. Outside, the angel of the Lord is moving with a sword, a mighty angel. A mighty angel, a mighty angel outside, a mighty angel, mighty angels, mighty angels, mighty angels. I don't know why angels are moving outside, but the Lord shows me angels, mighty angels, the northern army of the Lord's eye moving in power. Time of Satan. Time of over the destinies of God's people. Outside, an angel of the Lord's presence. Rekete 
We magnify your name. We magnify your name. Like fire. I see a whole roll outside. Like fire. A whole roll outside. Like fire. It's falling like rain. Like fire. No devil can stand. No devil can stand. This is a place for emancipation. God's people will go free. And no devil, no power in hell will stand the fire power. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity. At the back, this row, at the back, for you shall not stand over God's people. The fire of God upon one person at the back, you will not stand it. It comes like rain with power upon you. Every devil over God's people, those of you in front, at the count of three, I command every devil go. Go one, two, three, out, 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 Every enchantment. My sister, be free now. That devil, let her go free by the fire power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go. 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 Be free. That devil for the children shall not suffer the iniquity of the fathers. Bring that devil. Hallelujah. For you cannot stand the light of God. This lady has been tormented. Satan, out of her now. In the name of Jesus, be free. The heavens are open. God's power is touching everybody, not just those in front. Come out of him now. Come out of him. Come out of him. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now be free. Come out of her. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Upon you. That fire power. Upon you. That fire power. In the name of Jesus. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Hallelujah. I see a woman 
I see a woman who came with a child. A woman who came with a... I'm seeing a small boy. Where is the woman? Inside or outside? What's wrong with the child? His body is hot. His body is hot. Can you lose him? Can you hold him? If you are deaf, hear me inside and outside. If you are deaf, whether in one ear or both ears, if you brought someone who is deaf, put your hands in the ear that is not working. It's time for deaf people to be healed now. Or even if you are hearing, I see two people. You, you are hearing but it's not clear because it looks like there's water. You literally feel like water is going to go now. For one of you, water will literally come out. Katapato Kofaya. Deaf ears, hear ye the word of the Lord. Ephata, be opened in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Deaf ears, make sure you check yourself. We'll take some testimonies. Bring this lady. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Hallelujah. Please, I need someone with a mic. What is wrong with the child, madam? Just I came back from the work and I had the body of the baby is hot. And I leave him nothing nothing to You him. believe God who set this boy yes, free right I, now? Yes. Oh, there are miracles. Yes, Listen, God there are miracles happening. Now. Once you are under the influence of his presence, God is changing lives, opening doors. name of the Lord Jesus I set you free the power of God is going through his body that's what is making him uncomfortable in the name of Jesus be free now be free now I command your temperature to go down your son is free. Take. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone came. I don't know what it is that has to do with your leg. Is it pain in your joints or something around your leg? There's someone you came. You are not a regular worshiper here. Who is that person? The Lord is showing me someone like that with that case. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Once we call your case, we don't want to keep people so long here. Once we call your case, please run out quickly. Please. What's wrong with you? Anytime I walk, it always pains me. Anytime you walk, it always pains you. Where? How long has it been? Since when I was small. Bring a chair for me, please, quickly. What's wrong with you? It's paining you. Yeah. How about you? Please bring three chairs quickly, quickly. Let's save time. Just turn it. No, no, no. Turn it. God is healing heart conditions now. God is healing heart conditions. Hold on. There's someone, you have abnormal, what do they call it, medical students, help me. Heartbeat, irregular heartbeat. Irregular heartbeat. You? Okay, come. But there's another lady I'm seeing, she's taller than you. Irregular heartbeat. Sometimes it beats, you even have to use your mouth. It's a very serious condition. Who is that? Please come quickly. Lord, we release now. The name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit.
What's wrong? Come, bring her. All right. Can I see your legs? Don't worry. I'm not saying you should pull up. Just, just remove your shoes, can you? God will give you a miracle here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please watch your screen inside and outside. Watch your screen. Can you see that if you are looking very well, can you see that one of these legs is shorter than the other? Can you see it, please? Now, watch what the power of God will do. Sister, look at me. Open your eyes. Don't miss your miracle. All right? Tell us whether we are pretty. Are you seeing that one leg is shorter than the other? This is why the pain is coming. You will literally watch it grow right now. Are you ready? Watch it. In the name that is above all names. Watch this grow. Are you seeing it? In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at, look at, look at what is happening to this leg. In the name of the Lord Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you feel anything? Help out with the mic. What did you feel? Now try walking. Stamp it. Come. Get up and try to stamp it. Try to stamp it. Just stamp it. Try to stamp it. You still feel pains? You still feel pains? It's... No. Are you serious? Come on, celebrate a miracle. Come, come up here. Jump. Can you jump? Look at. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where's the other lady? While the ministers pray for you. This is a simple thing. I'm telling you. Don't go around just pulling legs and disgrace yourself. Because that's what a lot of people do. You like, this is not chambori. You disgrace yourself somewhere. Someone injures you for nothing. Hallelujah. Praise God, sir. While they are praying so that we will save time. They will pray for you. Hallelujah. This is, what's wrong with you? A fracture on your leg. Which of them? How long? Like seven months. Yes, sir. You've been walking with this? Yes, sir. You can't walk except you use it. Yes, sir. Look at me. My brother, I bring you life right now. Amen. I, look at me. Look at me. In the name that is above all names, I command a fractured leg to go. Let it join right now. See, look at what is happening to him. Look at what is happening to him. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. This is the power of the Holy Ghost going through the leg. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me, sir. Look at me. Can you walk? Look at me. Just start walking. Follow me. Look at this. Look at this. He came with crutches. Jump. Can you jump? Any pain? Fracture. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. A fractured leg. Just got healed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. A fractured leg. Hallelujah. If you're blind in one eye, what happened to you, sir? There was a who knows him? Who came here with him? Oh, you know him. He's a popular person. Is it true that he has been working with this crutch? Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Yahweh. I think we should give God some praise. Yahweh. Let's have the mic. Pastor Jake just pray for him. What happened to you, sir? Make sure you don't tell lies. So, hallelujah. Actually, I, I had an accident. Listen, okay. The leg was paining me. The leg was paining you. Exactly. So, okay. When the man got, uh, when Pastor Jake prayed for you, it got perfect. It, it became perfect. Come up, come up, come up. Do what you couldn't do before. Do what you couldn't do. Jump up. Look at this. Look at this. Yahweh, 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah. If you're blind.
blood group is SS or AS, now is the time for it to change forever. Listen, I'm serious, I'm serious. Please make sure you believe, we are not joking here. Outside, I see that there is a mighty miracle that God will soon do outside. AS. Hallelujah. You can connect for any member of your family. Anyone in this place, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we command AS and SS to change now to AA in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I sense someone has been healed in the ear. Someone has been healed in the ear. Please check. You came here with ear problem. Someone has been healed in the ear. The Lord is showing me someone who has been healed in the ear. Hallelujah. Sorry? My uncle has been treated for the past two Your years. uncle? Okay, hold on. I'm a footballer. My uncle has a twist. So every time. Your uncle has twisted. Yeah, How long? Time, three years now. Every okay. time I'm running, the uncle will be making some. Just remove your shoe. Let me make contact with it. What's wrong with you, sir? Irregular heartbeat. Eh? Irregular heartbeat. Oh, the irregular heartbeat. Watch it leave you now. The devil. Go! By the power of the Holy Ghost. Check yourself. Breathe. In and out. Test yourself. Could you do this before? Breathe in. Could you do this before? Look at this. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. You're free. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please, ushers, hold him. Let me just make contact with your feet. Hallelujah. Or Bishop Stan, just pray with him. He will pray with you. Check yourself. You will be healed. Hallelujah. So we can concentrate. I, I used to have, I play hockey. I'm a sport. Okay, listen to this testimony. I play hockey. I'm a sportsman. And over the years, I've been having this muzzle pull. Muzzle pull, okay. Yes, but outside there, I was feeling something. Outside there, his legs started shaking. And right now, there's no... Right now, he's healed. Power of the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pain in the right hand. There's someone I'm seeing pain here. Very severe pain. You even cry. Who is that person? It's time for you to rejoice. Pain. Severe pain is like a shock in your right hand. Who is that person? Pain. No, no, no. Check yourself, please. Check yourself and if act on it. Come on, watch this. Could you do this before? Could you do this before? Watch a miracle happen. Could you do this before? Stamp it. Stamp it. Pastor Stanley just prayed for him. Hallelujah. The Lord perfect you in the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you are celebrating what God is doing in this place? The hand. The Lord is showing me someone severe pain in your right hand. Please, when we call your case, just run out quickly. You are the one. Good evening. Thank you. Where is the pain in your right hand? How long has it been? It's up to five years. Now. Up to five years. What's wrong with it? What happened? I don't know. Just like that. Whenever I stretch it, I feel pain. In the Can you turn it round, up and down? Hold on. Can you do that before? Yes, but no. But you, you feel pain. Yes. All right. Watch what will happen to you right now. You believe that? <laughs> It is such fun to see, such fun to see. Say can lose. Hallelujah. Look at me. I come in a name that is above every other name. And we challenge this devil. It goes. Look at me. I want you to wind it as fast as you can. Go ahead. Don't think about it. Look at this. Hallelujah. Look at me. Sister. What happened to you? Could you do this before? Could you do this before? In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfects you by the power of the Holy Ghost. What's wrong with her? There was a time I wake up in the morning and I found this on my hand. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. What is this? I don't know. Alright, I'm going to pray for you. Does it pain you? Yes. Does it pain you? Yes. The pain will stop. He is able out of her now in the name of Jesus
Jesus. That devil of darkness, be gone. In the name of Jesus. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, bring this lady. Just bring her. For God wants to use you and make a mighty woman of faith. I'm seeing that I don't know what it is that this lady matched but she matched something that is demonic that's what is happening to her Jesus do this for your glory do this for your glory I set you free I set you free I set you free I set you free. I set you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free. I declare you free right now. Shalom. Located your hands. Wow. God will give you a miracle now. I am the Lord that healed thee. I am the Lord your healer. I send power of the Holy Ghost. who brought a sick person you are a guest please come and line up quickly you brought a sick person you brought a sick person please just pick up God is doing some you brought a sick person now is the time please come out let's save time you brought a sick person outside you brought an invited guest who is sick please come quickly bring them to the front What's wrong with you? Please, technical help us. Pain. Under my stomach, I also feel pains in my chest. Pains. I feel pains. You believe in Jesus Christ. You believe he will set you free. Listen, sweetheart. What you see here are not stage managed miracles. Are you listening to me? You believe that? Please, can I have a lady? Just lay your hands on her chest. One of the watchers. is a demonic oppression you will rise up totally fine come come you're welcome come what's wrong with you madam schizophrenia what schizophrenia mental disorder schizophrenia we, i think we should employ some medical people who is studying you are a serious medical student or you are a doctor eh no we have doctor sir please come quickly quickly appreciate him Please, quick, 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 quick. Please hurry up, sir, and help us. Hallelujah. What is schizophrenia, sir? Schizophrenia is a psychiatric condition. Okay. That is characterized by hallucinations. You hear voices. You begin to see things that don't exist ah oh so it's like madness yes. like a psychosomatic yes. condition you'll be free right now look at me my dear you believe that because 
devils. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. Huh, my dear? Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Can you look at me? Can you shout Jesus? Shout it as loud as you can. Jesus. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That devil of schizophrenia. Go. In the name of Jesus. Who, who brought her? What happens to her? Okay, okay. It's going to leave her. Are you listening to me? It's going to leave her forever. All right. She sees things that are not there. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. And I'm seeing her waking up and shouting in the night. Yes, Is that true? Yes, sir. In the night, people are sleeping. She just wakes up and starts shouting. Yes, sir. That's what the Lord is showing me. The Lord set you free. Now, sister, look at me. It does not return to you again. And I also see the spirit of depression that has come upon you. The Lord sets you free. Look at me. Look at me. Run down there and run back. Run. I didn't say walk. Run. Run. Run like you're doing 100 meters relay. Do it one more time. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Now run back again. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Totally free. Totally free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sir, just please just spread yourself. Let's do that quickly. You just minister. We have to save time because everybody must be touched this night. Hallelujah. What's wrong with you, sister? This is a headache I've been having headache. over a year now, yes. And it keeps making me present. Go! In the name of Jesus. Okay. I used to excrete blood. You used to excrete blood. It ends right now. Put your hands on your stomach. That devil of darkness. Be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. I've been having this particular backache. For backache. Lay your hands there. The power of God will hit you so hard. In the name of Jesus. Be totally hope. In the name of Jesus. They pray for you. Hallelujah. That's all. All right, let's have all the sick people come and line up quickly. Sick people, quickly. Oh, oh, oh. Heaven. Heaven. You're sick in your body, quickly. Oh, oh, oh. standing there I'd like you to be praying say Lord as these hands come upon me an end comes to it don't go back with your sickness those in the congregation be connecting some of you will be receiving the healing anointing in the name of Jesus go by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Pop, 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 pop,
like everyone inside and outside if you know anybody in your family listen who is not feeling fine or you brought the picture of anybody to connect or anything while we are praying whether it's hiv or cancer i like you to be connecting are you listening the worshipers are they, they are worshiping it's not just for the formality of it they are creating an atmosphere are you listening to me are you listening to me so i want you to connect are you listening to me i want you to connect to what god is doing hallelujah Please. Can you see? Touch this. 
Touch this. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. Come and touch it. That devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, the Lord perfect you. Give God a shout of praise. There is lightning and thunder, miracles and wonders, sound of many waters, heaven and earth. family has experienced any kind of delay now is the time to let go any kind of delay no 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 no. hold on because of I know there are many people just go back to your seat but all of you who came out the five of you all of you come and hold your hands together all of you hold your hands together five of you but I'm going to pray for everybody look at me the power of God will touch you I sense a strong anointing are you listening to me? A strong anointing. Lord, let it move across right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Restoration for your family. Great restoration. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Now delay. Any kind of delay. No, no, no. Don't come out. Don't come out. Please, just stay where you are. Just lift your hands by faith. Because I see in the realm of the spirit two gates. Bring this lady. Ah, I see a lot of demonic things. Bakatata. Come out of this family now. In the name of Jesus. Every yoke of bondage. Batatata Lift your hands, everybody. 
Mantatapakata. Projects that are not completed by your family members. That devil of delay is a spirit. Hear me. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariot. At the count of three, the power of God as he's hitting you is touching your family members. One, two, three, like red oh God. Like red oh God. So papa takata. Every spirit of today, go, 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 and command God to be open, break through in the name of the spirit. Everyone under the sound of my voice, let the doors of destiny be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you are a student here, I'd like you to shout amen. amen. You will know why you are shouting amen now. Because the Bible says that when Daniel was tested with his colleagues, that there was a kind of spirit that was upon him. And he was ten times. Suddenly, his, his intelligent creation his, his capacity listen friends I told you that this is the year you will do fearful exploit in your academics listen and if you are in 100 level happy are you in the name of the Lord Jesus hold on leave her don't touch her in the name of the Lord Jesus, look at me, young lady. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the spirit. Let the power of God bring you forth. Let the power of God bring you forth. You will leave your seat and come forward by the influence of the spirit. Let it happen right now. The contention of light. All those affected will come out by themselves. Leave them. All those affected, they will come out. The Holy Ghost will take you from your seat and bring you here in front. You will come out by the Spirit. Tap that lady. Just tap her. Come. All of them. No, they can't stand. The Holy Ghost will bring you right in front by your, by himself. He will pick you from your seat. No matter how far you are, he will direct you and bring you in front. Leave them. Leave them. They will come by themselves. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. He will bring them to the front. He will bring them to the front by himself. It's a sign and a wonder of the sovereignty of Jesus. Look, ushers, leave that girl. She will come out by them by herself. If it's the Holy Ghost, He will bring her to the front. You will come out by the Holy Ghost to the front by yourself. It's the compelling power of the Holy Ghost and the castle in the spirit of power. There's one more person. There's one more person. You will come out by the influence of the Holy Ghost. By the influence of the Holy Ghost. Sister, you come out by the Holy Ghost. You run to the front now by the power of the Spirit. Come 
God will do a thorough work. Listen, I'm telling you, many of you will go back and see doors opening left and right. I prophesy it into your life. I prophesy it into your life. I prophesy it into your life. Sister, come out of her now in the name of Jesus. Be free. I set you free now sister I set you free because she's speaking a language in the realm of the spirit and I hear what she's saying the Lord is setting your family free in the name that is above all names for after the count of five victory will be established that's what the Lord tells me one two Three, four, five. Please call this sister for me. Come, my dear. For God is not only going to set you free tonight, but God has begun a walk in your family. This is Kemi's sister, right? You will go back and see the dramatic things. The Lord is even restoring. I see financial restoration. Mighty financial restoration. There is a property your father wants to sell. Tell him not to sell it. There is a blessing coming. You just go and tell him. Are you listening to me? And for you, look at me. This is an evil spirit. Now be free. Now. Now. This is an evil spirit. Look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you listening to me? Your family, can me come. Both of you stand. God is bringing a major, major restoration to your family. You believe that? Look at me. I don't know what it is, but the Lord is saying I should tell you that the Lord can bless you anywhere in Nigeria, in UK, or Canada. God just says I should tell you. Are you listening to me? Hold my hands. Lord, let this lady step into a new level of favor. Now, Kemi, for you, look at me. It's a restorative breakthrough God is bringing. What you are entering now, you, would have, you are supposed to have entered it since. But the Lord is restoring to you. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power and the influence of the Spirit. Where's your friend? Where's your friend? The guy that came. Come. At me there are three breakthroughs God is giving you do you understand one I will not talk about it but you know what I'm talking about the second is in the area of your business and that restoration is going to come through wisdom and knowledge are you listening to me wisdom and knowledge but look at me God wants your heart like never before do you understand business books can only do so much. Are you listening to me? God must take your heart before he blesses your hand. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? I want to pray for you. Hold my hands. Give him an impartation, oh God. 
let him know he met the king of kings strong impartation in the name of Jesus I command freedom for you I command breakthrough for you by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus come you came from a university campus not Zaria where are you you came from a university camp, not Abi Uzaria. I'm seeing someone from a campus, not ABU. Who is that person? Please, please come, my brother. Come quickly, come and stand here. My brother, look at me. God is going to cause a hunger for him in your heart like never before. This is not the kind of prayer you expected me to pray for you. But well, you don't worry. Is that true? Sir, what did you expect? Uh, to prophesy to my life because I've been experiencing so many... Please, technical, help us. So, uh, I, I was looking for God's direction in my ministry. Basically, my whole life Look is... Look at going... me, my brother. You, are, you just started ministry or something like that. Okay, you are going into ministry. Yes, sir. You leave ministry and pursue God. You are not equipped. You will die for nothing. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. You just calm down. You need God. You need to experience the power of God. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. So that you don't jump into the error that people are having. However, yes, sir. because you came here, yes, God will ignite a fire in you. Amen. It will first start with the spirit of prayer. Amen. It will fall on you. You will pray like a madman. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. And from there, God will begin to give you direction. Amen. You believe that? Yes, sir. Hold my hands as tight as you can. <laughs> Look at me. Just look at me. Lord, as you have shown me, ignite him with a fire. Fire upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. The spirit of prayer, let it fall on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is the gentleman? Come. From where? Foot Mina. Mina again. How many of you know that God is doing something in me now? Hold my hands, my brother. You came, you will catch a fire. Look at me, look at me. You came with, an hung, with a hunger. God will not leave you. Just lift one hand up. You will feel literal fire coming upon this hand. And it will flow through every part of your body. Lord, let it be done as you are showing me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The name of the Lord Jesus. That strong fire upon you. It flows from your hand from your hand to every part of your body and look at me there is the spirit of leadership upon you you are going back with a strong spirit of leadership are you listening to me i'm hearing the name rebecca sorry we're out of time we'll round up now rebecca rebecca who is rebecca rebecca A student no where are you i'm in secondary school you are in secondary school yes, sir. will you be available if god uses you yes, sir. to bring a great revival in your school yes sir. what school is that jama secondary school jama secondary school hold my hands both of your hands say after me jesus i'm available like Catherine Kuhlman. Let your fire come upon me. Now look at me. Look at, look at the answer to the prayer. You will never be the same again. It's a mighty impartation. You are the same name. Come. You are a student of where? Maybe you. Yes. What department? English language. You believe God can do great things through you? Huh? Yes, sir. Say Jesus. Jesus. Use me. Use me. Anoint me. Anoint me. All right, now you have the answer to your prayer. In the name of Jesus, ignite her. See, it's like fire in your tummy. It's that of the spirit. You will never recover from it. Never. Never. In the name of Jesus. Foot me now. Okay, why did you delay? We have to hurry up. Please. 
did you bring your prayer request all right quickly quickly your prayer request outside make sure your prayer request if you are outside please write it quickly and pass it just stay where you are to heal to deliver to set free to win souls for the kingdom this and more may the Lord release upon you Futina. Uh, but you need to dedicate time for God huh? you don't pray you don't spend so much time in the word there's no other way to grow hmm? Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? But you came because you trust God to put a fire in you. Hold my hands, please. Lord, please put a fire in him. In the name of Jesus, that you will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. I want to convince you that without the ministration of the Spirit, everything we are doing in ministry is useless. Get this, get this, get this. There is a wrong wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years people can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um you know accounting timekeeping other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the Spirit. Not just being full of the Holy Ghost. Not just receiving the anointing. The ministration of the Spirit. The participation. That at every point in your dispensing of the word, there is a light. There is a life. That's the only way your words can transform people. Let me tell you something. I am always aware that it's a privilege for God's people to be gathered here week in, week out. Some persons have traveled from different states, different regions to be here. You cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a, a presentation of Bible or just a religious Bible study. It's more than that. That is the reason why, let me tell you something. It's good to listen to tapes. It's good to read books, but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere. There is something about the atmosphere. Are you getting what I'm saying? An atmosphere activates a lot of things. There is something about you sitting down. From the first time you come in and sit down, even before the service starts proper, there is already the ministration of, of the Spirit going on. Convictions are changing. Ideologies are shifting. Death is being replaced by life. The earthly is becoming the heavenly. Right? That revelation, listen, let me tell you. I've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress. I absolutely believe that before Jesus comes, you see, we've taught on the concept of immortality. There's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of Christ. But what we have not taught people, it is a scriptural concept. The Bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory. That the mortal can become the immortal. That the natural, the terrestrial can translate. There is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That divine dimension, brothers and sisters, is what we are called to demonstrate. A believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you. If you are not convinced about what I'm telling you, you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom. I know that here and there because of our humanity, the attachment of this body, somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually. And so we preach sensually. 
we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never live with that transformation can i tell you something the ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic it's about the presence of god changing you meaning if we come here and all we do is to sing you should still live transformed because you see the the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone when you are sitting in an atmosphere something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 verse 11 And this is the record or this is the testimony that God has given unto us what? Eternal life. The word here is Zoe. I know we talk a lot about it. Eternal life is not life after death. Listen, listen. Eternal life is not life. It's not the life you receive after death. Right? What happens after death is the consummation. The consummation. Right? eternal life is the divine life god's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of god it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in, in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that god has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of god had not life watch this the bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving jesus that means you're coming to christ or you're coming accepting the lordship of christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of god gets to you the bible says the life of god is hidden in the christ himself right the son of god so the way you receive that life is to receive the son of god that's why we preach that's why souls must be won so it's it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone it's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them i don't know if you understand what i'm saying now because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven you would have left immediately you gave your life to christ so the technology is of course it secures your eternal destiny but the bible says god gave us life but that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of god so way god's quality and class of life you must embrace his son embracing the father will not give you that life hear me embracing an angel will not give you that life embracing revelation will not give you that life are you getting what i'm saying you must know what ministers that life it says and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ 
is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the Greek, Alos Paracletos, the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of Jesus, here and now in your life. So my mortal body, that if I come to Jesus Christ and I truly receive his son, that life, the only gate, that's why Jesus said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way. Right? So the spirit of life, the very Holy Spirit can only find expression when you embrace the Son. This scripture is a clarification or an explanation of Galatians chapter 3. Right? When you begin to read from verse 13 down, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. It says, be made a cause for us. Look at me. Let me explain something to you. Do you know what makes the Old Testament old? Look up, look up, look up. Let me explain something to you. Do you know what makes the Old Testament old? Or when the Bible talks of the old man, he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete. The spiritual language is old. Are you getting the point? So it's not old because of time. I don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old are you getting what i'm saying now so what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time it is the very presence the eternal life of god that seed that conquers death that conquers weakness and the bible so designed the body of christ watch this the body of christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the holy spirit that's why the bible says for this cause because people cannot discern the mystery some are weak some are sick and some do sleep is that not in your bible he said there is a mystery of the body the mystery of godliness the bible calls it that christ can dwell in a mortal body he said if you do not discern it you will be weak you will be sick and you can even sleep meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of god but the 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 factor is this um in the kingdom there are two realities i want you to write this down what i'm teaching you tonight is powerful you will walk in the glory of god in supernatural dimensions if you understand what i'm saying there are two realities that every believer contends with or works with number one 
is the reality in Christ. The reality in Christ. The beginning of the experience of the believer in the New Testament starts in Christ. Outside of Christ, there is no initiation into the realities of the New Testament, right? The, the, the whole New Testament starts, the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Never alone. For with God, all things are possible. Outside of Him, many things are not possible. For in Christ, we are complete. For in Christ, we are perfected. Are you getting the point now? But then there are realities in Christ. For instance, we are seated in heavenly places, the Bible tells us, in Christ. The other reality is the experience of that truth here and now. The experience of that truth here and now. You can call it the reality in Christ and then the experiential reality. The Bible tells us all through the New Testament, all that we have become in Christ. Many times we do not understand why Apostle Paul, when he makes certain statements about the believer, he adds in Christ. And then we do not understand his communications. Some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in Christ, it means that the, the experience of it is manifest here and now. That's not true. Paul himself speaking to the Hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify, right? And he tells us certain things. He tells us we do not yet see all things. Let, let's turn there. Paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth. Hebrews, are you blessed tonight? I have the sun and I have eternal life. He who has the sun has eternal life. Two verse 7 and 8. Let's look at 7 and 8. Hebrews 2 verse 7 and 8. It says, Thou hast made him. Remember, Paul was quoting from David. It was David, the son of Jesse, right? The king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this. He said, to none of the angels, right? Has he said at any point, thou art my son, you know, this and that. He did not put the world in subjection to any angel. And then the Bible says, talking about man now, he said, you have made him, or in, in, in uh, talking about Jesus now in his earthly work, he says, you have made him a little lower than the angels, the word there was mistranslated. It's supposed to be uh, angelio, not necessarily like the beings, but it's an expression of God himself. Many times you see the Bible use the word angel to mean the very Lord himself. Is that not true? Many times in scripture, you will see that uh, and certain times the word angel is written in italics, meaning that there is more explanation to it. It doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the Lord, but God himself. So it says, the word there is supposed to be, thou hast made him a little lower than Eloha, God himself, the Almighty. So Jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth. Right? He says, thou hast crowned him. Now he's talking about his coronation. This was the coronation that David saw. The Lord said to my Lord, right? Sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So he says it here that thou crownest him with what? Glory and honor. And you did set him over the works of your hand. Verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing. That he, Listen, I hope you realize that in the New Testament, you are not anything until Christ is first it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So every time you see the Bible talking about man, find out whether Christ has become that thing. If Christ has not become it, because he must be the firstborn in all things. Meaning, the dimension 
that the Christ did not show us a possibility of getting, there is no point trying to get there. This is what I'm saying. Are you getting the point? We can contend even more than the earthwork of Jesus because he said this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes in me, is that not in your Bible? The works that I do. In other words, he said, My eternal life is not compressed to four Gospels. If I stayed longer, I would have unveiled more possibilities. Now, if you have my life, I authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities. And immortality is one of the possibilities in that life. Divine health is one of the possibilities in that life. The ability to live supernatural, though natural, is one of the possibilities. We must be able to stretch the possibilities. What are the contents of this Zoe life? What does it consist of? What are the benefits? Why should I want to receive the life of God? It's like a product you are marketing to me. Convince me why should I want it? What is the excellency of God's life over my natural life? Are you getting what I'm saying? So the Bible tells us, speaking about man, but that man was not just man like you. That man was first the man Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I know that when you read this scripture, he says, who is man that thou art mindful of him? That man is not just talking about the natural man. He's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory. Because he died as the only begotten son. Then he resurrected as the first of the begotten. And from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the zoe life is are you getting it? he was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the zoe life so when we saw the things that he did we saw the mighty things that he did the first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things and then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that i go for if i do not go i cannot send the comforter he will come and continue he will be an extension of my ministry the holy spirit is to us today what jesus was to the 12 disciples exactly what jesus was to the 12 disciples the holy spirit is to us today that's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven there are only two thrones in heaven but we agree that there is the father the son and the holy spirit because the third throne is in us there is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again are you are you getting that now it is him that takes us to the god class the presence of the Holy Spirit. Are we, are we understanding what I'm teaching tonight? So the reality is in Christ. And then our experience of that reality. The Bible says something very powerful here. It said, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Right? for in that he put all things under his feet he left nothing that is not under him at what point did this happen to man jesus himself said this when he resurrected what did he say he said all hail he told the disciples he says all authority exousia delegated power has been given to me when he was in the earth all authority let me say something that looks controversial when he was in the earth all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him i hope you know absolutely that's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of israel don't go outside that jurisdiction 
Is it not in your Bible? So when Jesus resurrected, he now said, now, the scope, a coronation has happened to me. Right? The same way it happened to Adam, that dominion mandate has been restored. And he said, now, all authority has been given. He says, go in that light. In other words, in Christ, the Bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come. That's what the apostle was trying to explain there. But he leaves a disclaimer. He says, but now. Everybody say, but now. Are you seeing? In Christ, all things have been perfected. But now, the experience of that reality. He says, but now, we see not. What is Paul saying now? Paul, you just told us now that in Christ, all things are finished. Is that not true? When Jesus hung on the cross, he said it is finished. Look at this. The thieves that were on the cross, one was telling him, ah, paraphrasing now, we saw you do a lot of miracles. Is it that you can't bring us down from the cross? Another person was saying, when you get there. So they were all thinking of a lot of things, but Jesus said today, he was giving him a revelation that in Christ, there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair i don't know if you understand what i'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting the point now so there is a difference between realities in christ and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes I am healed. But here and now, you do not see that perfected in your life. Right? You've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law. And all the ordinances, the, the handwritings and, the, and all the things that have spoken against us. They've been nailed to the cross. But you are watching right there at 25. There was a miscarriage. Your younger sister at 25, there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick I will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god 
because we think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned let me tell you sincerely at how distant we are from the things we talk about the things we claim and the experience of the same are you getting what i'm saying there is too much talk in the body of christ we must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who god is what he can do we make such bold statements about god but when it comes to bringing God in the scene, bringing his power here and now, we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves. The Bible says, for instance, Jesus Christ, the same when? Today and forever. How many preachers do you know have said that? How many of us men of God have said that? How many of us have been able to reproduce that reality? We must admit that there is something we are not understanding. We must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing. And let me tell you where we are missing it. This is it. Romans chapter 8. Let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously. And if we do not change, a lot is going to go wrong. Eight verse five. Eight verse five. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse five. Everyone read. It says, For they that are after the flesh do what? Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse six. For to be what? stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So a man can watch oppression in his life and say, no, I went to school. What, what sort of oppression? I mean, if, if you fail, you fail. It's not any demon, anything. You see that? And then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness. That all that you see is not all that there is. There are many people, for instance, who look up and say there is no God because they are carnally minded. They, they reason from the sensual realm. Let me tell you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in a bit, and I teach you principles, we just finished having financial principles, but in a bit to break life down into an understandable format, we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce God into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us 
we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the bible tells us that as you are speaking to people the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death how do you explain that mathematically so there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is this is this this is that you see it happens at times there are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i, I have studied a lot of people there is no man who works based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who change the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just i, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say kind i beg jare you are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid yeah, i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters 
there are realities i got a testimony from i got a testimony from um administration we went for in kaduna that 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 blessed me one of the pastors um came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when i went for the meeting a woman was pregnant brothers and sisters watch this at least biology tells us i'm not a doctor there are doctors here um so how the child is supposed to be formed eventually for reasons they cannot explain the child started turning mysteriously no the child does not turn mysteriously something turned it let me tell you the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120 there are spirits that are millions of years you call satan a liar you are right you call him a deceiver you are right you call him a fool you are very wrong satan is old are you hearing that absolutely you know sometimes the way people just talk me god forbid the right spirit can do this and that and that it's not all about this it's not and and while you are talking the realm of the spirit is just watching you how old do you know in bible days all of us are not even up to teenagers right now right yet the ancient spirit of god gives us a prescription about how to live and he says if you want life and peace be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while the, the bible says i am the truth i am reality when god began to build and train me god made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my earth work the holy spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact any transformation you see that for me the spirit of the living god is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that god will like you he is what you call eternal life if you are not aware of that be aware eternal life is not what he brings his very presence is the life of god jesus never became the christ he was the son of the carpenter he could die that's why his parents ran away with him but when the spirit of god came he made him the christ so when the bible says in christ it's not just saying in jesus alone in jesus yes but together with the spirit of life Look at what we have taught people about faith today. Look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of Christ that we call faith. Right? We teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo. That's why it's not working. Let me tell you, faith is a product of an encounter. When the Bible says faith comes by hearing, do you hear what you read? Answer me you see we need to examine it was talk it was a spiritual language it was not even just talking about hearing with the ear there is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings and that's what produces true faith because when the bible says hearing and hearing by the word at that time there was no books like this king james had not authorized this so what did they call the word The days that are coming will be fierce. The days that are coming will be spiritual. Right now, have you seen the way the world is going lately? There is no embarrassment about spirituality again. Is that true? Everybody is opening up. It used to be in secrecy before. But right now, there is an open confrontation. It's like everybody is saying, Kai, I'm not hiding it again. I'm gay. Simple. Kill me if you will kill me. It's not today. It has been like that. 
Another person saying, it's not only you, two of us too. Another person saying, let me tell you, I've not been a real Christian. This is my charm. Oh yeah. You see, everybody is confessing one by one. One by one. The meaning of that is, darkness is about to reveal itself publicly. Right? And it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim of it. Someone is building a house with blocks and cement. When you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week, one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two cores of blocks. It will scatter everything. What sort of wind is that? Is it now wind started? How many hurricanes are on right now? And scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes, they see images of spirits doing things from the sea. Minutes later, you see all the animals running. They are still spiritual, except human beings. Disaster hardly meets animals there. They run away and leave us. We are there trying to make money. We are dead and we are dying like chickens. This is a spiritual generation. Listen, this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious, to be spiritually minded. The Holy Spirit is the advantage. Of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage, right? There are so many people who now challenge their pastors, challenge everybody. Are you the only one who will preach? Are you the only one? We have a democratic church that can vote out, throw out pastors because of policies. Have you read in 1 Samuel, I can't remember, I think maybe chapter 15 or 13, one time when Saul, is that true? When Samuel told Saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly, is that true? He was coming to make a sacrifice. They gathered the people, it's in your Bible. And then Saul told, the, I mean Samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come. And they waited for him, they waited for him, they waited for him. After they waited for him, people were scattering. And the ego of the king, Saul, was, was at stake. And he said, Kai, this guy is not coming. Let me what? Offer the bond offering. As soon as he offered the bond offering, Samuel came. And he said, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, honestly. I was afraid. It's not like I wanted. I mean, too, I didn't want to do it. The people were disturbing me. And since you were not around, I thought since I was a king, let me do it. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had allowed me to come, God would have established your throne. So it would have now been son of Saul, not son of David. He said, because you have done this, the kingdom is taken to you. For God has found another man after his heart. Just for violating the priesthood. How many people violate the priesthood today? And they don't care. Right? All kinds of people. Any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right so that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about Uzzah? 
in the Bible. I'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards. The Bible says we do not discern the body of Christ. And many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate. Right? Remember that there was a time when the ark of God was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uza, for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you, you are our younger brother. Don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in, in, in five months, God can open you to fountains of blessings. You know, they look around and say, eh, I know. It's not like I'm saying God cannot do it, but you see, we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today. Right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals? Today, if we were before the Red Sea, this is what Apostle Joshua Selma would have done. Engineers, where are you? The spirit of Bazalel. And then we'll start constructing a bridge. We're saying that if I'm a prophet, in five years we'll cross this Red Sea. See that? That's how we would have worked. That's how much we have reduced God. That's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come. And we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start the architects come. Let's start. And then where are the kingdom financiers? And then prayer department. Where are? And then we keep praying. And God says, is that all to me? And then after five years, we say, now you will cross the bridge slowly. And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by Apostle Joshua Selma. Shame on us. Because we call that the Old Testament. We laugh at them. We even say they are a shadow of us. Are you joking? Read Hebrews 11. There are men who in their humanity, we cannot even touch their shoes. Yet, they, that's the Old Testament. We are very quick to say it's old. We have done away with it. But we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done. It's in your Bible. People invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening on around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? Look at, look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true? And do a lot of carnal things. There is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural. Or and, 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 and that of unbelievers. If I stand right now and I minister to Sam and he falls under the anointing, people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft. Where did we leave our spirituality? 
is it not in your bible that jesus with the divine life walked through people on a cliff they were trying to kill him he walked through them like a spirit where is that generation i wanted to show us a video it's just that um we we, we didn't have it i didn't discuss with the media would have shown us that video um of patricia king right i know they don't have it they may not have it now otherwise you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into god doesn't mean some other people are not the divine life we shout the way we shout the way but there is nothing the way about our lives if they shoot me i die the way right every ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me the way now i don't say this in a derogatory way i'm saying this to challenge us i guarantee you if we learn how to receive that the way life you will watch hivs get healed as if they do not exist it will no longer even be a prayer point the more i see people line up for counseling i don't rejoice to say wow it means i'm an anointed man i look at people line up for counseling and i bleed in my heart because i say shame on us it means we are doing very small a sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow i had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is god speaking to tonight where have you reduced god let me tell you one day maybe i'll come in the night i'll bring a chair here one coin on here we'll just sit down and we'll discuss and i will share with you some of my encounters when god began to walk with me some of you if i share it as you are seated now you've seen me every day you've even eaten with me but you will not believe it because you say it's a lie encounters with angels all kinds of spiritual encounters because i believe in him i believe in him i'll never forget the first time i had the audible voice of god let me tell you something if you hear god you must have faith you see that it's not about maybe i'm trying to calculate you must have faith listen at the at the mount of transfiguration when elijah and moses appeared what did peter do peter recognized them immediately had he ever seen them who told him he said what i see three people it's a privilege that means i have questions to ask let's prepare three beds one for elijah one for moses because he thought they came to pass the night with jesus and discuss a lot of things when an angel appeared to mary mary was not afraid meaning was a natural occurrence it was the salutation she was afraid of not the angel today if somebody says he has seen an angel say, i beg jerry angel where you think angels are just like that yet the bible says are they not ministering spirit i'm showing you why we have become carnal we threw away the holy spirit we are gradually kicking the holy spirit out in a bid to do what we call word 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 right word 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 just the word give it the word and, and don't give me anything else there are even people who reject jesus and say just give me bible give me bible jesus go once it's not bible even jesus should go away and the devil likes that theology if it is bible you want zondervan keep publishing new versions keep coming out and we keep carrying the bible and we convince ourselves that because we are holding bible and reading it we are growing in the world but we are becoming carnal that's why death is rampant it is that carnality do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us is that true witchcraft in the village is not a shock an average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft so if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear he will believe it but in the church ah if i disappear here now now in this place finally the article will be complete the article you have been writing you will pay new nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it 
confirm hey, which is on suit yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up mighty army where is the army truly there is an army that is rising up but let me tell you our level of transformation is slow we are hardly becoming like the christ there is there is a standard that has been measured for us and the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave we must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up the church called spiritual growth prosperity since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come i say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality so if i come out with a jeep if there are five jeeps that are lined up here you say man god is in koinonia what five jeeps is here oh. in bible days men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit one man will threaten a nation not a politician but elijah not in a radio station he made a declaration to the heavens he vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said me i speak there will not be rain not god revealed to me i stand in my office over this territory and i said there will not be rain and he went to bed it was by sorcery jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head how many men of god have disgraced themselves on television how many men of god have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of god predicted that 2012 is his rapture huh how many you see we, we we just show the whole world that we have been lying for years instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more. Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity. Because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healing and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working. No. We have to be, admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church, what will you tell them? I know what you will tell them. I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't, we are liars. We are must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son. And that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it but there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of god will start schooling people by ourselves 
because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of god in these days the lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week i've been under an intense anointing right from when i finished the, the financial series and the holy ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit i'm telling you god will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me god taught me so many things secrets in the bible there are times that i will the lord will be visiting me and his presence physical cloud i'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about real cloud like a fog will fill the room and i'll lie down there and the pages of my bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures i hope you believe it hallelujah we have reduced god we have reduced god is this is too bad to an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up people look and they say kai who knows him look at how you put pressure on men of god people come for miracle service we have to be asking them where are you coming from so that you don't think that they organize things around it's a shame it's a shame It says he that has a son has life has life look at what jesus did an example of what we should become jesus five loaf and two fish he multiplied it everywhere he went he was doing good everywhere we go we are doing bad or at least average and yet we claim to have his spirit there are people who even brag and say i have the spirit of jesus without measure where is it where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday. And I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here. You have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you? How many people don't pray they come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense i am a prayer warrior but there is a there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer it follows their teachings it's like a spirit it's like a finishing on your words if you are a man of the altar it truly that fire is not just the shouting there is a communication of life how many people claim they are prayer warriors and they stand and speak and while they are speaking you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically because there is no life that is coming the question god is asking you is why did you stop believing in me many of us did not start like this god is speaking to us many of us when we started we were spiritual we meant business with god eventually as we started getting some results in our lives we have thrown the holy spirit out now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures it means we are growing spiritually do you not see the need in our world today there are people with hiv cancer there are people in need of the zoe life that we claim to have we claim to have zoe i am an ambassador of the kingdom then demonstrate it he said when i came to you i did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech because i know the danger that it can do to you but when i came i came in a demonstration i came to prove to you i came to bring the jesus of your bible to be made manifest here and now ah, this is the theme of my life that everywhere i go i become an expression of his reality that no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. 
right now demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping they are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out when we finish we say kai it was a wonderful service together let's share the grace and they join us and share the grace demons mock men of god all around and we give all kinds of explanations for it do you not see what is happening to the body of christ but the holy ghost revealed this to me that in the seasons that are coming personally he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials where in a sleep you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you right i want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power and when you wake up in the morning like like solomon an intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life when i would sleep in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of god's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives i remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives i remember a man called peter tan the first time i would meet that man was in a vision the first time i ever saw apostle paul he was in a vision i didn't even know he was the one i just saw a man who was short and bald headed after speaking to me then i asked who are you and he didn't respond to me he moved a while and then he turned and said paul the first time i would see the picture on the internet i said this is the man i saw yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the name koinonia was a revelation it's not that i just sat down and said kai what should we call it now no no right now everything we do is sensual and carnal the exact blueprint and the things that we're doing in this ministry were a revelation a revelation by god it was the spirit of god that revealed to me the secret of church growth now i'm not saying i'm throwing away materials and all of that it's good i've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves but I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Let me have somebody here, just one person, anybody. We're a visitor, we're a pastor. Don't worry. You came all the way. Or oh, you served in Jigawa and you are here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then when you come for koinonia, oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you. And, and all those things you say, I, I love you. You are my all in all. You are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally, literally to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said, who do men say I am? One day the Holy Ghost will ask you, who do men say I am? Say, yeah, you are the spirit of this. You are the... And then he says, who do you call me? And you say, I don't know you. And he says, now right, my name is the spirit of life. And to you, that becomes a revelation. At once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartation. When was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When 
was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement, you don't know retreat. Unfortunately in the kingdom, you must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple, your temple now, not a building, is filled with his glory. And songs begin to come. Look at what musicians write. Nonsense. They, they write songs that don't bless anybody. They just come up with songs. The reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income. When was the last time you stood in his presence and you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit? When was the last time you went to minister, man of God, and you stood in that meeting and when you finished, people were shaking. They could not explain what happened. They knew that something heavenly, like the dew of the morning came upon them. They may not even remember what you thought. But they knew they carried the spirit when was the last time because of your teaching someone just turned and said lord i will seek you and lock yourself three days do that today in our generation and people say you are over spiritualizing things so god is not like that this guy came all the way from where from from jigawa state to come for a meeting because there is a hunger it's not a conference it's not a convention but hunger brought him right god must show us something in this generation otherwise these games that we are playing will end up frustrating us god must show us something that's my cry as a man of god i cry to god and i say lord i don't want to do the ordinary there is something you've got to show me that's why I love my secret place. Those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street eating granite and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face my relevance is tied to his glory my ability to translate the realities in christ let me tell you something my my goal i've seen it in visions but they have not happened i saw one time in a vision let me share with you one vision that i had one time i i say it jokingly but truly truly i had a vision and a ghastly motor accident happened ghastly motor accident as it was happening it's like I was caught up from somewhere, a physical location with my body. And all of a sudden, I appeared there. And it was just like a shadow like this. Just passed through those dead bodies. And including the car, there was a sound like the car, the way it hit, the impact. It came back as though nothing had happened. Ah, may God bring us to those days. May God bring us to those days. May God bring us to those days. A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. You invoke the power of creation, the soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible where you see that many things happen to people? Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do its best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them. Because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. 
even if you are not interested there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit for you to do that you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension but how many people are that willing bless you how many people are that willing how many people are that willing to see the power of God transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach I don't like people turning to me and say man of God your message was powerful powerful in what I want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that I want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming not just that a great man of God visited a place that's not enough and this life is in his son he who has the son has this divine life but the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ it must be translated to find expression the more of God's life and God's glory transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness and then you become as I would say the envoys of his presence careers of his glory careers of his power then you will see the eyes of the blind open then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped hallelujah while I was ministering over the weekend there was a woman who I don't know if they went to wash her ear or something and then the ear was blocked during the workers conference of CDC and I called the woman out and standing face to face I said I can either ruin this woman's life with lies or give her something that is of the truth one time Benny Hinn was laying hands on people and they were falling down and Ora Roberts looked at him and said Benny don't just lay hands on them he said give them something oh fine can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now media is ready with the video okay media just just play guys maybe you can sit down and then after that you we'll come up let's let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video and um it's a video of the supernatural is to spoil you and then i'll come up and, and and wrap up very quickly in San Juan, Puerto Rico, where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place. The Lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways, angelic visitation, uh, very unique signs and wonders, which we'll actually show you in a few moments. You'll be absolutely astounded at what the Lord is doing. But it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for God. There seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved, healings, deliverances, miracles all those good things with people deepening in their worship and and loving the Word of God and so it's a it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out so we're at the house of uh, restoration and mercy with pastor Dennis Roja and uh, it's just awesome what is taking place pastor Dennis is one of the most humble people that I have ever met he's so precious has just a small uh, work and a very humble work it reminds me of, of, of where Jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things um, pastor Dennis uh, was uh, in, in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him. He had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, 
and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head, and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years, and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here uh, because uh, we just dunked them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave uh, to Pastor Dennis in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it is filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out comes back in. Uh, right now in the current church that he's in, that he has a Bible open on the podium and oil just fills the pages of the Bible. It's filling the pages of the Bible and uh, little gemstones, little rough cut diamonds are falling out of the Bible onto the podium. And then as he squeezes the Bible, the oil comes out, copious amounts of oil. This particular oil smells like myrrh. It's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it, and it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has. And at the same time, these kind of um, manifestations are happening. In fact, he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church, off the beams, onto the floor, onto the seats, and it's just nonstop, continuous pouring out of oil. At the same time, these manifestations are taking place. Um, there's souls being saved, there's people being healed, intense worship and prayer, uh, deliverances, people are being set free. This is truly a move of God and that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek Him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. It must bring our focus back onto Him. That we'll get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor. And that's when he first noticed the prince. He was so excited. The Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited and the prints that were on the floor, the footprints, were actually the footprints of that angel. They're about 16 to 20 inches long, I believe. And um, then uh, he had to go away the cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way. And on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage I don't think does it justice, but when you're here, you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room. And so it's really an amazing time. Uh, he was also at a, uh, a, a prayer meeting with five men praying. And they were uh, praying, and as they prayed, the Lord visited with an audible voice. And with the audible voice, the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew. And Pastor Dennis said, well, why are you giving it to me then? Because I'm a Gentile. And the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, 
a supernatural token of the 12 uh, tribes of Israel, the gemstones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel, and that he had an assignment for him to do in that way. And so then the gemstones uh, uh, came, just dropped over the next month. They start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st. He had all 12 stones, with the amber one being the last one. When you see them in, 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 in person, they're just brilliant and causes a worship, an adoration in your heart, an awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them. Absolutely outstanding. 1,200 gemstones, over 1,200 gemstones have fallen. The 12 uh, special stones that were given to him, uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing in intercession before the Lord. And the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel, I believe. And uh, many other signs and wonders, such as the oil and the, the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil. But all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is wholly devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. People don't understand, they think he's of a cult or whatever, but I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God, because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied in Acts chapter 2, he said, in the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to... It's not just to get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days, we'll just come and we'll dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that he has done in time past. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. It's to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to money and marriage and power and mundane things thank god for these things we just finished a financial series but let me tell you the truth god is looking for revivalists god is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with and i've made myself available god knows with my entire life you reign you ancient zion's king Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, spirit of the deep. And weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, sing, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth the spirit of the deep. And weep, Kadosh, you 
you are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life, the divine life, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We want to become epistles of power. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Oh, see, you ancient Zion's king. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth. You are mighty on your throne. Say, you are mighty on your throne. 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 We refuse to reduce your power. We step up the standard. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are 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 mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king, cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Thou spirit of the deep, we cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. We invoke the ancient spirit of the Lord Most High. Lord, we are a generation that will embrace you. Break forth, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, see, you ancient Zion's king. Cry out, Kadosh, we cry out, Kadosh. There are impartations going on in this place. Break forth, thou spirit of the Lord. We cry out, Kadosh. You 
you are mighty on your throne. We sing, O oh, ancient Zion's King. We cry out, Kadosh. We cry out, God. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep. The spirit of revival, apostolic signs and wonders, the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of power, the spirit of territorial impact, the spirit of encounters, open visions, visions of heaven. Spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, you ancient iron king, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Enough of nominal Christianity, enough of powerless Christianity, enough of faking it in the name of faith. There is a substance, and this life is in his son. The soul life, the divine life, the energy, the ability of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord that will bring awakening, signs and wonders, miracles and breakthrough. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. We sing, you ancient iron steam. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth the spirit of the deep. Cry out in our midst, O oh God. Let the spirit of adoption cry, Abba Father. Abba Father. Let that cry of revival, of a ministry of power ministry of the spirit that can change lives we will not deviate from the part of the apostles we will not deviate from the part of the prophets we will not deviate from the part of spiritual progress we will not deviate we refuse to bend we refuse to conform to the powerless dissertations of men. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Say, you are mighty on your throne. You are my 
hiyoko Make up your mind from tonight That you will never minister death to people again Make up your mind That if at all you speak That you will speak as an oracle With power Make up your mind That if you teach You teach as one who has touched heaven Make up your mind That if you sing tonight You will sing as an oracle of grace Enough of powerlessness Enough of ministrations without impact, without transformation. Press for one minute. We'll soon round up, but press. Go ahead. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I need power in my life. I need power in my life. I'm tired of faking it. I want the Zoe life. I have received the Son. Lord, let the life, let the realities in Christ be manifest. Let the realities in Christ be manifest. I'm tired of a powerless ministry. walk conscious from today if you have received the son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. your voice and pray one minute I am determined to be supernatural in every way in every way no the sons of God are not natural people they are supernatural in every way pray my hands are supernatural 
my words are supernatural lift your voice and pray my utterances are supernatural they carry the life-giving power the sway life the power to heal the power to alter the destinies of people the power to transform their lives you are mighty on your throne you are mighty on your throne you are mighty in my life 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 you are mighty in my life. Say, you are mighty in my life. 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 One more time. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That from today, dead religion will die out of your life. I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the Zoe life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves that the earthly the terrestrial has become celestial and heavenly I pray in the name of Jesus that may that life begin to manifest through your life that your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders that when men need God to show up they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory I pray for you may your words carry the power from heaven May your words no longer be barren and powerless. May your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you. May they bring healing. May the words bring grace. May they bring life. Like the river in Ezekiel 47. That everywhere it flows. Let the fish that was dead come back to life. Let the souls that are dead come back to life. I pray that from today, your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death, wasting the time of God's people. May you step into an unusual dimension. I'd like you to receive what I'm releasing upon you. It's a ministration of the Spirit. Many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk. You will begin to see the demonstration. Not just in talk. Talk, talk, talk with no results. There are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there, all of a sudden your territory begins to react because there's a way life. Not just that which is in Christ alone. That which has been manifest right here, right now. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. You will go back to your territories. Many of you will pass people and you will hear spirits scream out of them. You didn't plan to pray for them. But you took the presence of God. You took the life of heaven. So way, the life that controls heaven. So way, the life that upholds all things. I'm praying for you 
that everything that has defied God in your life in the name that is above all names may that Zoe life come upon it right now may that Zoe life come upon every sick body here right now may that life of God let it come upon every dying spiritual life every lukewarm spiritual life the life that makes men doubt whether God is working with you or not I pray for you let it change from tonight you don't have to tell people you're a man of God carry that life carry that divine life may that life halt sickness from your body permanently this repeated stamina circle of nonsense that comes upon your body discern the Lord's body so that you will be strong discern the Lord's body father I pray let there be mighty men and women that will arise from this meeting tonight let tonight's meeting produce a spiritual awakening and I stretch my hands and I pray for you whatever you came here with in the name that is above all names that is not consistent with the Zoe life whatever it is that is not consistent with the life of heaven right now I declare in the name of Jesus that it leaves your body and your life now I cause every pain I cause every situation that is attempting to challenge God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord put a testimony in your mouth that will verify before men that you are a carrier of his presence father we give you all the praise listen walk out of this meeting not just with an excitement but with a consciousness that you are not only a carrier but a dispenser the bible says the first adam was made a quickening soul a quickening soul can only benefit but cannot dispense but the second adam was made a life-giving spirit a life-giving spirit next time someone is sick around you don't just turn and say bring him to Joshua Selman or bring him to this tell him in the name of Jesus I agree with you you have been doing it as an ordinary Christian that's why it's not working you have just been doing it and say after all I'm a brother do it now as one who is together with the Holy Spirit always realize that it's not about you it's about the paracletos always realize you are going to preach don't just go alone I'm going to go and minister you'll be disappointed Go with him. When you stand on that stage, even if you do not know what to say, realize that there is one, the spirit of life. As you stand to sing and minister, realize that you are not just talking songs or melodies, but you are ministering life. And you will be amazed to see people change. Don't be afraid of confronting situations with God without God there are many things that are not possible hallelujah I want to pray for people here right now keep standing everyone I want to pray for people right now you had this fiery message tonight on the life of God there are people who have not received the son of God you have heard about Jesus you may have even preached about him he has been offered to you many times but you have not received him hallelujah there are others who have given their lives to Christ but sincerely you know that the name of what you are doing right now based on the standard of God you have missed out on the track of spiritual progress and you need to make your way those two categories of people I don't care if you have been a preacher for 30 years you need to make your way right you say Lord this thing I've been doing is not Christianity I'm, 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 I'm tired of playing games right now inside and outside please make your way quickly and come to the front i want to pray for you i want to pray for you don't sit back 
don't wait for someone to come before you god bless you find your way to the front there are many people outside don't sit back make your way to the front God bless you. Koinonia, keep celebrating them as they come. Your life must change. Don't worry. Leave I alone. Hallelujah. Tonight will mark a turning point and a defining moment in the life of many people. Hallelujah. Please draw, draw close as I lead you to pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Um, I understand there's a woman who, there are, there are two people I'm supposed to minister to, but I'll minister to one right now. There is a woman who has been having issues of miscarriage. This is not word of knowledge. I, I'm aware that the woman is supposed to be here. I don't know if she came, if she's around. Is, is that person around or that family you are the one not just word of knowledge you, you came uh, is this your first time up in here come you're the one with that situation from where did you come Mina. Mina. how long has it been four times four times you get pregnant you lose the baby you get pregnant you lose the baby we are glad to announce to you that this is where it stops i guarantee listen i guarantee you i guarantee you god did not bring you here to waste your time there is always a spirit behind it four times is not mistake four times is no longer biology four children four destinies four lives thrown away by the assault of darkness now imagine if this was your church and a woman comes like this to come and meet the great man of God. Then you talk grammar. And by the time you finish explanation, the Bible never said creation is waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. It says creation is waiting for the manifestation. Madam, I assure you that not only will God set you free, but there will be restoration in your life. You believe that? Lay your hands on your stomach and let's pray brings joy we represent the government of heaven lay your hands that devil of darkness your time is over in this woman's life right now you're a wicked spirit of darkness and you must leave right now go out of her by the power of the holy spirit there is an anointing coming upon you for you to be free of this nonsense that the devil has planted in your stomach i feel heat leaving my hands to you that wicked spirit in the name of jesus christ i declare by the power of the holy spirit that you are free of this demonic influence not only will you give birth you will go and take in immediately and your child will stay you will have as many children as you want in the name of jesus christ this thing is not happening to you alone Huh? This, is, this is a trend in your family this is because I'm praying for you and I see a spirit huh? I'm seeing a trend it's something that keeps happening people miscarry and people have all kinds of things and so it's not like it's something bad you did as a person are you getting my point now but Jesus Christ sets you free where's your husband he's in Mina too go and tell him that not only will the Lord um bring a child to your family God will turn around your entire lives because you are here you believe that father in the name of Jesus confirm your word like Eli I speak to you like you spoke to Anna go and come back with your child it's done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah God bless you those of you coming uh, I want you to lift your hands Please, you are not reciting a poem. Young and old mean it serious with Jesus. See, the trouble is when people come out like this, they suddenly remember that they were emotional and they came out. 
and then they are embarrassed and then they are ashamed. This is serious business. Hallelujah. Say after me from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Some of you, as you are praying, the power of God will come upon you strongly because the gospel is the power of God. Right? To them that believe. I receive your life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from tonight, I'm no longer natural. I'm no longer ordinary. The power that raised Christ from the dead is within me. I declare that habits, addictions, and every life that is not consistent with that of the kingdom has no power over me. Right now, the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of God, the life of God is at work in me. I declare. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.